uh, we, we got our clearances. We met in Oakland. We flew to uh, Japan and then to, to Vietnam. And then even in Vietnam, we were special. Uh, we got off the plane. Uh, they said, any of you people from MACV and the six of us and one master sergeant, we were the only ones and we were separated from everybody and given a little bit nicer place to be for the first night. Next day, we reported to uh, MACV headquarters. MACV was like the Pentagon in Vietnam. It's where the four-star generals were, where at the time the commanding general was Abrams. Westmoreland, who's from this area, had just left and General Abrams was in charge. And so we went there and got more clearances and introduced us to the, our situation. And then, uh, then we went downtown in Saigon, the capital of South Vietnam at the time, and uh, we were put up in a hotel for a couple weeks just to get kind of used to things. And that was kind of fun time for us, you know, a bunch of kids. It was real hard for us to believe what we were doing. We never talked about it like that because we were all cool, you know. B but what a privilege. We saw things that nobody saw. Let me give you an example. Uh, if Richard Nixon, president at the time, wanted to send a message to uh, General Abrams over in, in Vietnam, there would only be four people in the world that would see that message. Nixon, our operator at the White House, me in Vietnam, and General Abrams. And so, you know, this is a, what they call an eyes-only message. And it's only supposed to be Nixon and Abrams, but somebody had to send it. We had to type it up and encrypt it and send it. That was us. And so you, you, were, you were right in the middle of history.